Hello, champion. My name is Dr. Mel Campbell. I am so excited to spend this time with you. We're going to spend a good um, 45 minutes today talking about what it means to have emotional intelligence and use that as a champion. So I have been uh, speaking for quite a while. I've taught about 45,000 students, 1,000 seminars in six countries. And along the way, I picked up some things about emotional intelligence. Uh, I am a psychologist. Uh, as a psychologist, there are certain things that you can do to be healthy. There are certain things that you can do to be a champion. And we're going to talk about that today as we think about what intelligence means to you in your journey to be a champion. So when you think about emotional intelligence, what do you kind of think about? Um, emotional intelligence is defined as the act of kind of understanding, knowing your emotions, using your emotions, and helping you when things get rough to emotionally get through it. Think about all the champions that you've had in your life, meaning a Rocky or the superheroes that you see in the superhero movies. Uh, it's a billion dollar industry, these superheroes and how they function. I'm a big uh, sci-fi guy my, myself. Uh, I have a Star Trek uniform. I have a Jedi outfit because I believe in, in the concepts of being a hero. And, and that's what a champion is. A champion gets to the top. You see champions in all of the sports that you see, Olympic champions, so on and so forth. And what Olympic champions do, what emotional intelligent people do, is they use their emotion in order to guide them through their journey and do it effectively. So when you think about your emotions and how they run in and out of your life, we're going to talk about the different emotions that take place uh, when you go through life. You want to think about how you can control those emotions in order to get to another level. Uh, so when you're able to identify and use and manage your own emotions in a positive way uh, to communicate effectively, it can help you relieve your stress. Um, emotional intelligence itself was uh, first brought on the scene by two psychologists. Uh, as you see here on the slide, uh, Peter, John, uh, they were the first psychologists to bring the scene, but Daniel Goldman really was the one to bring emotional intelligence to the forefront. So uh, he was the one that kind of made it popular. Any books by Daniel Goldman is going to be very effective in terms of raising up your emotional intelligence. So Daniel Goleman himself um, believed emotional intelligence and believes emotional intelligence is your self-awareness, your regulation, your, your motivation, and your empathy towards others. Uh, it is also involving your social skills. When you are a champion, you're always in that fight and you're always doing what you can to stay positive. Uh, you see my background as a background I use in, in a lot of my Zooms to think about the, the abundance that can happen when you're, when you're at the ocean. Uh, you go to the tropical places in the world and there's just beauty all around you. When you have that unlimitedness inside of you, uh, the, the ocean makes up 70% of, of the world. And if you think about your emotions, that, that almost makes up 70% of what you are uh, going back and forth between conscious and un unconscious emotions. Uh, the unconscious emotions are the emotions below the surface, below the ocean, if you will. Uh, and they are the ones that kind of come uh, spontaneous. Uh, when you uh, think about listening to me or when you, you think about what beats your heart, these type, type of things, these are your subconscious thoughts. Now, what can we control? We can control our conscious thoughts. And one of the first steps is to become very self-aware. Uh, what does a champion do? A champion believes uh, they can be a champion. And you have to believe that as well. And you have to study the best you can on all of the positive materials you can, like going to the summit and learning from the masters, learning from people that have been there, done that. You know, I'll, I'll tell you about my journey and, and how I got through uh, a lot of the tough stuff I got through. Um, I, I have been down as far as you can go financially. Uh, yes, down that far. And I've also, um, in terms of my education, gone as high as you can go uh, in being a doctor and a psychologist. Uh, I've seen uh, the very worst in myself uh, in, in terms of, of feeling failure and defeated. And then I, I sense 
the triumph of knowing I was going to get through. There is nothing that is going to stop me from making my dreams happen. You have to find something that's going to motivate you and find something that's going to ignite you to get to the next level. One of the things that ignites me uh, is my daughter, my daughter Willow. And uh, she's three years old and she's love of my life. My family is everything to me. And now that she has been in this world, I've sensed a, another purpose uh, to, to leave a legacy that she can be proud of. So with emotional intelligence, you, you see this raw in a child being raised, right? And it's like that with our emotions. Sometimes um, we have to deal with our inner child and that inner child that uh, throws temper tantrums. We do that, right? Uh, we get overstressed. So you have to be aware of what emotions are coming through. Uh, my daughter really doesn't care about the awareness of her emotions right now. She just feels them, right? So she's going to get to the point where she's going to be able to regulate that. And that's what mature does. Emotional maturity is very real. Um, this concept is going to help you in, our, in your emotional journey. A plus B equals C. Your attitude plus your behavior determines your consequences. So positive attitude, positive behavior, positive consequences. So if you think about your attitude, it's the one thing that you can really control. Um, now we're here for what I call the EI mission. What is the champion that has a mission to, to defeat you know, the enemy? Uh, whatever that enemy is for you. Is it negativity? It, it is for me. Every day I'm on a mission to eradicate negativity from my life and the lives of other people. So when I speak in front of audiences and, and people learn from me and that light bulb comes on uh, because they've learned from me, uh, that's the joy for me. Um, what the joy for them is that they're able to change their state. And Tony Top Robbins talks about this a lot. I'm a big fan of Tony Robbins and all motivators, really. Um, he talks about if you're in that negative state, you can get to that positive state. And you want to think about that in your life, too. So we're here to boost your emotional intelligence. Sometimes when I talk to people, they didn't even know what the word emotional intelligence meant. And it's just anything dealing with your emotions is emotional intelligence. Uh, we learn how EI affects your work. Uh, thinking about uh, those that are business owners, uh, those that are champions at work, when they're managers, uh, those that are working for others, doing everything they can to serve the company and serve the mission. Um, we have to know that EI itself is a skill. And it's a skill that we can build. Uh, we are going to understand emotional intelligence better from a psychological point of view that you're getting from me, as well as uh, a view of the champion, right? The champion not controlling their emotions, they don't become champions, right? Champion has to be disciplined. A, a champion has to know what they want and go out and get it. Um, we think about the journey, you know, I'll, I'll mention some people from movies, sometimes it's easy to relate Rocky and just getting beat down so hard and we're like that in life. And we have to be like Rocky and, and just keep getting up and, and, and sometimes just get a hit um, so we can learn and grow. Uh, but it is important to dodge the hits if you know they're coming, right? Uh, we want to learn uh, the positive way of reacting with emotions rather than the negative. Emotions um, carry with it baggage. And we all have a baggage in terms of the things that happen to us in life. Uh, either we learn from those baggage points or we don't. Uh, one of the things that was really tough for me in my life was my parents' divorce. And people are like, oh, Dr. Mel, you know, you're, you're saying uh, parents' divorce. This is a big event in my life and it's a big event in other people's lives. Uh, some of you are dealing with so much more major issues than that. But to me, it was a, a game changer in my life. And luckily, I did have... Uh, pretty powerful support system in terms of my family and my church family, so on and so forth. So when you're thinking about emotion, you can either think two thoughts at any given period of time. This is amazing. Great concept. You either think a positive thought or a negative thought. There's no other thought you can think. So why not choose that positive thought? You can choose to live a negative life. Think about the consequences of living a negative life. Uh, you don't live as long. Positive people live longer. What a shock. Uh, negative people experience more health issues. Uh, sometimes that stress bottles up inside of us. I worked at IBM, uh, MCI, Equifax, and AT&T in my lifetime. All Fortune 500 companies. So I've been you know, doing my business uh, on my own for 20 years. So when you think about uh, the type of emotions that are generated in a given day, you're guided by those emotions. I call it the emotional guidance system. 
you have a, a phone that has a GPS on it, uh, you pop in the address and then it takes you to where you need to go. Well, it's the same with emotional intelligence. Uh, you pop in the emotions that you want in your life and you can choose to determine if you um, want to go that direction or not. Are you going to wake up and say, oh, man, this is going to be a bad day. Oh, you're going to create that bad day. You're going to start looking for bad days. You wake up, you stub your toe, you spill your coffee, you, you know, uh, you know, you start looking. This is going to be one of those days and you create that days. Why not do the opposite of that? That's what a champion does. A champion says, I am going to live, have a positive day today, no matter what happens. A lot of us are waking up uh, watching CNN, constant negative news. Now, I'm a big fan of CNN in terms of the network itself. However, um, I'm, I'm not going to sit and, and watch a, a death toll or, uh, you know, uh, who's been murdered and, you know, who, who's um, the politics, so on and so forth. Why not have and wake up and listen to a PNN, Positive News Network? right, where, where you're talking to yourself, you're motivating yourself. I'm a huge believer in affirmations. I have a book about it. I love affirmations, the things we tell ourselves over and over again. So tune your emotional guidance system to the direction you want to go rather than the direction your emotions want you to go. Because emotions, um, when it comes to logic, they, they get thrown out the window. So you can choose, it's like a negative emotion, positive emotion that you have. You could either be logical or emotional. Right. So logical is like the Mr. Spock, uh, very analytic, um, very much about, uh, you know, numbers and, and not emotional. There are times to be logical and there's times to be emotional. There's times to get pumped up, motivated, ready to go. Having that tough skin and no matter what's going to happen to you in life, you're going to make it through it. You're going to be strong. You're going to get it done. We also have an emotional story. Um, I want to tell you about a story that uh, happened to me in my life. Um, we were, I was shoveling stuff with my dad. I was maybe nine or 10 years old. And my dad, um, you know, we were, we were shoveling. I told my dad, I said, Dad, I want to go inside. I'm cold. He goes, son, are you a man or are you a mouse? And I said, I'm a mouse. And I ran inside. Do you know to that day, every day I'm proving that I'm a man? It was a good story for me. And nothing my dad did wrong. I totally get it now as a father. I totally absolutely get, you know, he was wanting to teach me a lesson to be a man. And it did. It taught me a lesson, a lesson that I'm going to use the rest of my life. So we have emotional stories that drive us. Uh, I want you uh, as an action step. And I really do want you to do some work after this, this webinar, after this summit. I want you to write down some of your stories, write down 25 of your stories. And I want you to look at some of the emotional stories that we tell ourselves. Do you know sometimes that you tell yourself a story that's not even true? You can look back at the story. Like I, my brother and I grew up together. My brother's two years younger than me, although he acts like my older brother. I love him. He's amazing. Um, the same event that happened to us, he remembers it completely differently than I do. And we verified it with mom and the belief that I had of that story was completely wrong. So sometimes we'll make up stories that are not even true. So you want to evaluate some of those stories. So write down 20, 25 of your stories, title only. If you want to write out the details, you can. I'm a huge believer in journaling. I've been journaling since I was 16 years old. You can do a video journal. You can do an audio journal. You can write down a journal. I remember looking at my journal and the emotional story that it told myself about prom. Prom. I look back now at prom, I laugh, I laugh at some of the, like, did I really freak out about prom? <laughs> All right. So it's like that with, the, with emotions. Um, you want to think about life from the 100-year-old self that you're going to be in the future. Is this really going to matter uh, in time? Uh, champions believe in their power, they believe in their goals, and they believe in their destiny. They do what it takes to be successful in life. So think about the emotional story you want to write for yourself in the future. Visualization is what champions do. You know, you, you visualize having that gold medal if you're an Olympic athlete. Think about this. An Olympic athlete changes or uh, uh, challenges themselves and trains for four years straight. Four years for sometimes an event that happens in seconds. In seconds. So who becomes the champions? Those that are able to control their emotions. Imagine an Olympic athlete say, I've trained four years for this. It's seconds. I'm not going to make it. They lose. They choke. As, you, as you've seen on TV, these poor people. And then there's some people that show up 
having done this for four years straight, have trained for four years straight and said, I'm going to get that gold medal. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to do what it takes to be successful. No matter what it is, I'm getting that gold medal. I'm going to do my job. And that's all we have to do in life is do our job of being a champion. You know, there are some um, clients I have as, as a coach. And if I tell you to not eat the cookie and then you eat the cookie and then you come back and say you ate the cookie and I say don't eat the cookie and then you keep telling me that, I stop coaching. I believe that you should follow what successful people do and do it. So do that with your own self. You can coach yourself. You can be your own psychologist. I'm talking to the champion right now, who is you. Reverse the negative emotion and make it positive. You can do it. Think about all these wheels, this wheel of emotion. This wheel is always turning of all the different emotions that are going on in your life. All the crazy emotions are going on in your life. How do you deal with all these emotions? And you can look it up. This is a psychologist called Wheel of Emotions. Uh, and check it out. How do you manage all those? There's so much emotions going on all the time in your life. Now, I love this slide. It's so amazing. These are some of the champions uh, that have changed our world. They've changed our world. And what a shock. They had a high level of emotional intelligence. And Mother Teresa, who was on a mission to eradicate the negativity of homelessness and, and to the poor. And then, of course, Oprah Winfrey, uh, she is the queen of emotional intelligence. If you study some of her uh, interviews in the past um, and, and how she's one of the richest women in the world for a reason, because of her emotional intelligence, the ability to be able to connect with other people. And if you truly want to make money um, for other people, for yourself, um, you know, for a side business, whatever it may be, uh, just being successful as a champion. You have to learn to emotionally connect with other people. You have to start speaking with your heart rather than your head. When you speak from your heart, it's people can connect. They can feel it. And then, of course, we have Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King changed the racial conversation. He saw an injustice, and he fixed the issue with his emotional intelligence. He didn't allow the issue to go on. He fixed the issue. I'm not saying it's completely done because we have a lot of work to do in terms of, of race relations in this country. And I will tell you myself, a lot of people get very confused about, you know, what race is this guy, right? Um, I wasn't born the race that I, you know, I, I wasn't born the race that I, that I chose. I was, I was born inside a race I am proud to be in. You don't choose your race. Your race in some ways chooses you. If you can understand what I mean by that, I'm proud to be um, a mixed heritage. I'm proud to be a black man. I'm, I'm proud of my, my, um, my white roots. I'm 51% African-American, 47% European and 2% Arabic. And I'm going to go to every country that I've been, that, that my genetics are from. So we have to really study that. I don't know if people are familiar with the, the movie roots. That's, that's kind of about my family. Alexander Haley and I are, are related. Um, if you, you check the research of all the, the struggle that people have been through um, in life, uh, there's so much uh, challenge that go on. And Martin Luther King, Gandhi, Gandhi saw an injustice too, and he fixed that injustice. He didn't allow it to go on. He said, we got to fix this, right? And, and the, their work is never done. Uh, there's still injustices all over the world. So champions fight for what is right. And, and that's what I think you should do. Uh, when you're looking at the... Uh, traits of emotional intelligence. You see them here on the screen, um, how we embrace change. Uh, what's the one consistent thing in life? It's change. Change is going to happen. Why not be proactive about the change rather than reactive? Again, there's two states, positive or negative, emotional or logical. And then, of course, you have embracing change or not embracing change. That is a big difference in life. Who embraces change? Those who are champions. And we have to learn to say no, no to the negativity, uh, no to toxic people. One of the most powerful things you could ever do. Another motivational speaker taught me this. Take all the negative people and delete them out of your phone. To loser, uh, loser, delete, loser, delete, and replace them with, with powerful champions uh, in your life. 
Now, you also have to know your strengths and weaknesses. I want you to take some time after this webinar and write down your strengths and weaknesses. And if you need more paper for strengths, get ready for that, right? So we have to evaluate what our strengths and what our weaknesses are. We have to do what we can to have a plan to fix that. I ask my students all the time, how long does it take to, to form a habit? 21 to 30 days, you've heard it before. So why not make um, creating control with your emotions, manage your emotion a habit? Uh, why not create a habit of being a champion? So every day for 30 days, I'm going to work on being a champion. I'm going to be a champion and do that for 30 days straight. And you'll have that habit. And, and that's a big change, especially when it comes to your emotions, because you're going to have some negative days. And it's how we remember the positive days. I actually have a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet. Um, I'd, I'd love to just kind of check off all the goals that I have in a given day. And I have like 21 goals, you know, small goals like um, meditate and reading the Bible, so on, these, uh, so on and so forth, um, you know, making calls uh, to clients and, and all these things that I know they're gonna be effective for me. Why not have a spreadsheet or a piece of paper every day and you're checking off these goals? Um, I have been consistent in my goals and that's what champions do, they're consistent. Uh, and you have to let go of the mistakes. The mistakes are going to happen. It'd be great if we were perfect in life. That's not always realistic. It all begins with the self-talk, what you say to yourself all day long. Are you saying positive stuff? Are you doing the positive action? Because your self-talk determines a lot of your reality. It's a law of emotional intelligence, if you will. There's a couple laws of emotional intelligence. Uh, one of the, the laws that with emotional intelligence, if you're aware of your emotions, you can control your emotions. That is a law of emotional intelligence. We'll talk about some more laws as we go forward in this presentation. Are you feeling like a champion? Because when you feel like a champion, it creates that champion mentality. And emotional intelligent people, we're always very naturally curious about other people in terms of our social skills. So you have an event, you interpret that event, that's gonna be a response and then you're gonna, and that's gonna determine your outcome. So that E plus R equals O, I want you to write that down, E plus R equals O. An event plus a response is gonna determine an outcome. So a positive event, positive response, positive outcome. Negative event, negative response, negative outcome. It really makes a big difference in terms of your reality. If you're going to let the reaction get to you. Um, when stress does happen, my father always taught me this, never panic in a panic situation because logic goes out the window, especially when it comes to emotions. There was a, a story I'll tell you. I know it's a little simple story. Stories really help us relate. We were canoeing. Uh, me, my brother, my, my dad, and my mom. My dad grabs his canoe and the whole canoe flips over. We go into the water. I'm all wet and soggy and I started panicking. And my father pulled me off to the store and he says, son, never panic in a panic situation. And what I learned from that is that, you know, and by the way, all I had to do was stand up, right? The water was not that deep. I just freaked out because I was in my comfortable place. And, and we're going to have that sometimes in life. Life's going to shake, uh, shake us up. And we have to learn that being a champion is our de destiny. You are meant to be a champion. You have to speak it into existence. You have to act like it. Now, when it comes to emotions, you can be energized by emotions. It can give you purpose. It can motivate you to take some act, action. And it, and it also can positively affect your health. Um, negativity can affect your health, can take your emotions away. And, um, it can lead to conflict and misunderstanding. Uh, there's a um, story. There's a powerful story about, um, it's not even a story really, it's, it's actually a scientific fact. Um, when a scientist tested some water, he made these big jars of water, um, labeled one positive and one negative, and people would go by these jars of water and speak positive things to positive jars and negative things to negative jar. Do you know after time that negative jar became murky and nasty and discolored and that positive um, jar of water, when they studied it, um, it was crystallized and it was beautiful. But you have that same water inside of you. It's your blood, right? So 70% of you is water. So think about what you're charging your blood with. Are you charging it with positivity or are you charging it with negativity? Um, the, the awareness part of emotional intelligence is so important. Um, it's one of the key components. Um, when you know your emotional intelligence, it can drive your emotions, your mood. It can also uh, help you identify what's really going on with you. I'll give you some questions to help identify that. 
When you get to the ability where you can regulate your emotion in terms of your feeling negative emotion, you can regulate it and make it more positive. Um, you know, some people get freaked out about the economy and climate change and all of these things that are happening in your world. Can you control them? Now, you can do some activist stuff, right, to help you with that, but to sit all day and to think about these issues when you don't have control of them can literally make you sick uh, mentally, physically, spiritually, so on and so forth. So you do what you can to act. Now, some of us, and this happens a lot and sometimes on my webinars when I'm chatting back and forth with people, um, they don't think before they act, right? And an emotional intelligent person very, uh, always thinks before they act. They act because sometimes things can come out of your mouth depending on what type of personality you have and people might take it the wrong way. Um, just know there's so much powerful stuff going inside of you and it's about activating that and that's what a champion does. It's time to activate that champion. It's time to turn up that volume. It's time to make a difference, not only in your life, in the lives of other people. You do realize that people need you right now. People need your story. They need your message. They need your help. There are people right now starving because of hunger. There are people being abused. There are people that have um, addiction issues. You can help people. Help yourself. You can help others. Let me go through some more components of emotional intelligence. When you think about emotional intelligence itself. Um, you think about motivation. That's what we're talking about today. I'm hoping you're motivated. Got to have that PMA, that positive mental attitude. You know, I always start my seminars with high fives. Um, in seminars with high fives, um, you should always think about doing that um, when you begin your day. You motivate yourself by doing a high five. You know, if we were live, I definitely wouldn't have done that high five motivation. Um, we want to do that because you got to get yourself out of the bed and get yourself going. A lot of you just um, turn on the radio. You're just hearing this negative news all day. I, I only listen to my motivation in my car. It's the only thing that uh, that I want to listen to because I want to get to another level in my life for me and, and for my daughter and for the world. I believe when we have more positive lights out there, more motivational life there, we can really make a difference in people's lives. So Learn to uh, control these emotions, act on your emotions. Empathy is so important when you're with others, um, sensing what they're sensing. Dr. Brene Brown has an excellent video on empathy. If you go onto YouTube and type in empathy, uh, do a view count, uh, her video will pop up. So you definitely want to watch that. Uh, <clears throat> and then um, another component of EI, EI, EQ, we kind of interchange in, in emotional intelligence, emotional quotient, almost the same thing. Um, I'll give you a book, by the way, that can help you test your emotions emotional quotient and see where you're at with that. So those of you who think about your emotions and think about, are they making a difference in your life? Uh, are you using them to your advantage or are they hurting you? And I want you to write your sale. We're going to get a piece of paper right now, write this down on a scale of one to 10. Where are you in terms of your emotional intelligence on a scale of one to 10, uh, 10 being the highest. Now, if you put a six, a seven or eight or whatever you put down there, um, I want you to think about what would it be like if you put, a, get to a 10? What's gonna take, what is it gonna take for you to get to that 10 if you're at a seven? And right now, just work on getting to an eight if you're a seven, right? Work on getting to from a nine to a 10. And there's some of you like, oh, I'll never be a 10. I'm a 10 person. Why even have a ranking if you don't get to the top? I believe champions believe in getting a 10. You got to get a 10 when you're in gymnastics, right? Right, and that, that's the thing with life. We we have a goal that we want to achieve in life, and and, if, and for me, you don't have goals. Um, you're you're going to end up wherever life takes you, and I believe in in going where where you want to go rather than going where life takes you. So, what is the goals for you? I want you to again. I'm having you write. So I will put. I will put you to work. <clears throat> I believe in writing down your goals. Write down your life goals. Write down your yearly goals. Write down your monthly goals. Write. write write down your daily goals. You got to write these goals down, write life goals. One of my life goals is to do a world cruise with my mother. You know, she loves cruising, cruising. I love cruising. We're going to go to beaches like you see in this webinar here. We're going to go. <clears throat> what is the goal for you? You know, write those goals down, read your goals every day. That's what champions do. They read their goals. They say, I'm going to get there. I can do it. Because when you understand your emotions and you manage your emotions and you use your emotions, you're going to get to another level. I promise you. I've seen it done. I've done it in my own life. You know, you are going to make a difference in the world. And you have to do that with your attitude.
Now, when you think about all the different EI skills um, that you, you grow in life, um, you think about the time management. By the way, speaking of time management, one of the, uh, the things that I heard said uh, that really changed my existence about my time was this. Do the thing you don't want to do first when you get to work. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, make the call you don't want to make, you know, uh, to have the conversation you don't want to have, that will change your life. That's what champions do. Don't be afraid of anything in life that's going to hold you back. Go after it. <clears throat> have, uh, have control of your emotions uh, is such a, a different level for so many people. Uh, it's going to make a difference in the teamwork that you do um, with the members of your team. If your manager is going to make the difference in, in a successful team and an unsuccessful team. And it also helps you with your stress. Stress can kill. Uh, it is alarming that depression's at a, such a high level right now. If you check um, the World Health Organization and you check, um, I've done, you know, work with some really powerful companies in, in the past. And, you know, we, we've seen the, the effects of stress on the Fortune 500 employees. Um, and we've got to learn to control our stress before the stress controls you, right? <clears throat> got to have the flexibility, the communication skills. All of this is part of EQ. There's just a whole world here of emotional intelligence that, that you open up when you start emotion, um, understanding emotions. Now, you've probably seen these graphics before psychologically. <clears throat> there are actually two versions of each of these. If you look at the faces on the, on the side there, you can see a vase. You can see two faces. Some of you are like, oh, I only see one. That's what a emotional intelligence person does. We see the balance of both and we see it from different points of view. That's the empathy part. And then you see a duck and then you see a rabbit. Yeah, someone you're starting realizing that. And then you see the old lady and the young lady and the other graphic you see there on the side. It's all about perception. That's what it comes in playing. Emotional intelligence is all about that perceptions. So when you ask yourself some of these questions, am I controlling my emotion effectively? Am I misreading this? What are some of your emotional blind spots? Write them down. Um, there are certain hot buttons that when people press these, you can kind of go crazy. You can kind of go ballistic. So be careful with them, making sure people don't press your hot buttons. Think about why am I feeling this and, and, be, and why, um, how, self-aware am I really? And, and what is that emotional trigger for me? Is this the right emotion I should be having? So these are some of the emotional questions that we can ask ourselves. I want you to put, um, you know, I went through some really powerful courses in my lifetime, Dale Carnegie, Landmark. I want you to put five times more enthusiasm in everything you do. Um, I was the one of the youngest ones at 18 to take the Dale Carnegie courses, um, a Dale Carnegie course, and it changed my life. And I believe in education. I believe in seminars like this. Um, you know, I won, a, I won an award. Uh, I won multiple awards with them when I was 18 years old. They also gave me a college scholarship and paid for my course because they saw the motivational speaker in me. And I saw that motivational speaker myself at 16. I took uh, psychology 101. Um, last uh, exam, 100 questions. I finished in 15 minutes, got them all right. I'm like, I knew psychology was my destiny. Every day I lived to be a champion. Uh, and when you see the emotion that you have, it always has a story. And you have to release yourself of that emotional story. Emotional communication is always going to work better than logical communication with yourself. All right. Oh, I logically shouldn't eat this, right? Uh, you know, we all could probably stand a, um, lose a few pounds or to build some muscle mass so on and so forth. Why don't we work out? Right? We know it's healthy. It's the emotion that drives us, the discipline to be able to do it. Uh, the sacrifices that we make, you have to make sacrifices to be a champion. Remember, your emotions are going to pass. Um, you give things power. Whatever you feed in life grows. You feed the negative, that's what grows. You feed the positive, that's what grows. So start using emotions as a tool, as a resource. Uh, you can be more powerful if you want to be. Uh, you can be more successful if you want to be. So you can increase your emotional intelligence. I want you to think about what you're going to do on a daily basis to get in touch with your emotions. Now, in psychology, you know we always got to mention the Maslow hierarchy of needs. Uh, this is the needs that uh, people have as they go through life. Um, we have to satisfy physical needs, then safety needs, and then belonging needs, esteem needs, and then get to that level of self-actualization. Guess what level the champion is at? The self-actualization level. Be that champion where you're at the highest level of your game, of your talk, of your behavior, of everything you're doing to be successful that all derives from your emotional intelligence.
So remember, there are going to be times to be calm. I recommend practicing meditation, um, which is the concept of stilling your thoughts. Um, you can go on YouTube and, and Google guided meditation to start you on that journey. Do a minute, do five minutes, do 30 minutes. I know people meditating for over 45 minutes. It will make a difference in your life. Meditation, journaling, exercising a must. The more you exercise, the more healthier you'll be. Choosing the right things to eat, um, thinking the right thoughts. Um, remember, some emotions you just got to let go. When things come, you got to put that rhino skin in, the skin on and be ready. You know, I told you I'm a big fan of Star Trek. You don't go to a foreign planet with shields down. You put, you put your shields up. So think the positive thoughts, get your shields up, stay motivated, and pump yourself up every day to be that champion. I do want to close with some really powerful quotes, some quotes from Daniel Goleman. Um, again, authority. Um, Emotional Intelligence 2.0, by the way, is a great book to get for your emotional intelligence if you want to test it. Um, Bradbury, I think, is the last name of one of the authors. So as Dan and Goldman says here, in a very real sense, we have two minds, one that thinks and one that feels. The champion feels. Um, Wayne Dyer, one of the most powerful um, psychologists um, that, that was a spiritualist as well, uh, he said you have a very powerful mind that can make anything happen as long as you keep yourself centered. And Daniel Goldman also said, if you turn um, out, if you are tuned out of your emotions, you will be poor at reading other people. So you have to get good at reading yourself and reading your emotions. And then um, when a storm, I love this quote here, when a storm comes, it stays for some time and then it goes and emotions like that too. It comes, stays for a while and then it goes and emotion is only an emotion. We are much, much more than emotion. And then finally, you have an emotional intelligence. Uh, what emotional intelligence is, looks like is that you're confident, good at working towards your goals, adaptable and flexible. Friends, I close you with this powerful quote. And again, I'm Dr. Mel Campbell. I want you to stay a champion, be a champion. Listen to this, um, this poem, if you will, from your heart. I am your constant companion. I'm your greatest helper or heaviest burden. I will push you onward or drag you down to failure and completely at your command. Half the things you do, you might as well turn over to me and I will do them quickly and correctly. I'm easily managed. You must be firm with me. Show me exactly how you want something done. And after a few lessons, I will do it automatically. I'm the servant of great people, alas, of failures as well as well. Those who are great, I have made great. Those who are failures, I made failures. So I'm not a machine, though. I work with a precision of a machine plus the intelligence of a person. You may run me for ruin or run me for profit. It makes no difference to me. Take me, train me, be firm with me, and I'll place the world at your feet. Be easy with me, and I will destroy you. Who am I? I am habit. Your habit will determine your success in emotional intelligence and being a champion. Your habit will determine your success in life. Stop doing the wrong things. Start doing the right things and continue to do what works. And if you do, not only will you be successful in being an emotional intelligent person, you will also be successful at being a champion. Again, this is Dr. Mel Campbell. I thank you so much for taking the time to watch this webinar, and I wish you luck in controlling your emotional intelligence and um, being emotionally intelligent. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day.